ready. I'm ready, Eddie. <laughs> Joe Picaro, and my age is 85. Born in New Britain, Connecticut. I'm living in Thousand Oaks, California. I'm endorsed by uh, DW Drums, uh, Zildjian Cymbals, and Vic Firth Drumsticks, and Aquarium Drumheads. Self-taught. Right now and all my life, I've been a jazz drummer, but I also played in the uh, Hartford Symphony Orchestra uh, for uh, 17 years, and I played opera and uh, avant-garde music. I'm a natural human being, just a nice guy, and I love animals and people. A plan B? No, I didn't have a plan B. I worked as a, I never graduated high school, I worked uh, since I was like 14 years old. Worked on tobacco in Connecticut, picking tobacco. I even shined shoes before that. And eventually I worked in a department store. And then eventually I was a chauffeur for the uh, in, uh, president of uh, London uh, Insurance Company. And then I eventually made a living in music. The first concert I intended was a uh, at uh, right in my hometown, in near my neighborhood, was a state theater, and I went there to go see Gene Kruper and his orchestra. The first record I bought was uh, a Charlie Parker record, way back uh, around 1944-45. It was Charlie Parker live at uh, at the uh, at a concert hall in Toronto, Canada. The last record I bought. God, <laughs> uh, oh my God, that had, that's years ago. Wait a minute, let me think. Give me a minute to think about that one. Uh, that's good. Uh, sorry, that's right. good. I got it. I did buy a record, an album. The last record I bought was Roy Haynes with Chick Corea. And don't ask me the name of it. <laughs> okay, I won't. <laughs> well, uh, first drummer was my, one of my first teachers, Al Lepak. But as far as well-known drummer, uh, you know, famous drummer was Gene Krupa. My favorite place on earth? Uh, <clears throat> Hawaii, Honolulu. It doesn't have uh, really a name, but it's a melody that comes from the opera Madame Butterfly. My favorite instrument is the drum set. After that, my fav favorite instrument, yes, is the piano. My favorite drummer right now? Mm -hmm. uh, okay. uh, I would have to say Vinny Caliuta. One, yeah. a hobby? Oh, I know. I like working out, doing exercise. I have a dream that my dog, Philly Joe, is not doing too well right now. Do, he's not doing too well right now, he's going blind. And I wish there was a way to get his blindness because aside from my wife, he's my favorite person in the world. Well, you know, beside my wife and family, after that comes Philly Joe. And I named him after Philly Joe Jones, the famous drummer. When I get there, I'll be there. Oh, no, it's, it goes the other way. I'll be there when I get there. Website is... Uh, my Facebook page. <laughs> so, yeah. hi music lovers, this is Cat with Hats, again from Los Angeles College of Music, but this time with the other drum department head, Joe Pocaro. Right. Hello. Hello. <laughs> it's so nice to see you again. Nice to see you. Jo Joe is a um, well-known session player also, and he recorded um, drums with some of the music giants, uh, Frank Sinatra. Well, I, with Sinatra, I played, uh, I played drums for him once. Okay. I, I went to, uh, way back in the day, uh, uh, Hubert Humphrey was going, he was running for president of the United States, and Frank Sinatra was backing him up. and. Uh, he invited Frank Sinatra to come to uh, Minnesota, Minneapolis, you know, to put on a show. And on the show was uh, Buddy Rich and his big band. 
and Frank Sinatra and Frank's normal drummer, uh, Irv Kotler, could not make that you know, trip. So he asked me to go along and sub for him. So I got a great chance. I had a chance to play with uh, drums for Frank Sinatra. And I also uh, uh, you know, played opposite Buddy Rich Okay. which was uh, an honor that night, you know. Okay. And, um, and that's how I worked with, uh, that's how I came about working for Frank. But here in L.A., in the studios, I played percussion for him on a couple of sessions. In fact, I did his last album called Duets, and I played percussion on that uh, album. And then I did some specials with him, like... Uh, a while back, I went. Uh, they had the Super Bowl out here, mm -hmm. and I played. He was, you know, featured on the Super Bowl. You know, he sang at the Super Bowl, and I played percussion for him there also. And then I did a lot of uh, uh, live shows for him too at some of the big hotels in town. Okay. And then I went to Palm Springs once with him. Mm -hmm. uh, he used to. He and his wife used to put on a special a benefit for abused children, you know? Mm -hmm. And I played uh, percussion for that show. Okay. So I did uh, mostly percussion with him, but I did play drums for him a couple of times. Okay. And Joe also played for um, Pink Floyd and Tom Waits and Diana Krall, many, many people. And uh, something very important, without Joe and his wife, Eileen, there would not be a band named Toto. That's right. That's that's a true story. <laughs> yeah, in fact, all three boys played in Toto. Yeah. That was uh, when you, you know when you asked me what were some of the greatest moments in my life. Of course, uh, when they uh, did the Grammy Awards, uh, they were nominated for the Grammy Awards in the '70s, mm -hmm. and uh, they won seven Grammys. Uh, I was in the orchestra that uh -huh. played for it. Oh, great. So, so every time they won a Grammy, you know, for like <laughs> album of the year or record of the year, you know, and so on, the, the whole orchestra would turn around and, you know, wave to me, and, you know, <laughs> gave me some encouragement. Yeah. And I was a nervous wreck, you know. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't think uh, that they would, you know, win that many uh, awards that night, you know. And actually, from that album, uh, even though uh, Africa was a big hit, and I played on that album uh, on Africa, what did you play? I, I did the bass marimba, do 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 do, and then I hit the gong. There's a big splash right after that. I played gong on that, <laughs> and uh, yeah, and then, uh, but actually, uh, my favorite tune on that album is Georgie Porgy. Okay. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Why not? I like it too. <laughs> yeah, I yeah. love it. So you must you you were very proud. Oh, that was a great one of the greatest moments in my life. Because I remember them when they were you know, uh, like ten and eight and six years old. You know, uh, they used to practice with instruments like Mike. Out of cardboard, we made the you know uh, it the, we cut out a cardboard the shape of a guitar, mm -hmm. you know, and Jeff played uh, Remo at that time. Remo, drum heads, had a practice practice drum set he put out, and Jeff played on that. And then Steve actually uh, uh, played on a electronic, uh, uh, you know, a toy keyboard. Yeah, and they, at school, they did a, uh, a couple of songs of the Beatles and they won first prize. Mm -hmm. So that's how all, all that c kind of started, you know. So did you, did you train your boys? How, how much did they learn from you? Oh, I, I trained them. How, they all studied, and, you know, at some time or another, like Steve, our son Steve, the piano player. I would sit down with him and, you know, make sure he was uh, reading, you know, the music, the notation correctly, mm -hmm. you know. And we would pay him a penny for every uh, uh, every time he practiced. Oh wow! <laughs> a penny. He didn't get rich. <laughs> <laughs> no, they didn't get rich. Uh, Jeff, uh, I kind of started him off myself, you know, on drums. 
But I used to take them. I used to teach at a store back in Connecticut, you know. Mm -hmm. And I would take Jeff with me. And, uh, you know, he was uh, maybe eight. And the other teachers would get a cancellation and they would say, come on, Jeff, I'll give you a lesson, you know, drum lesson. So he learned from some of the other teachers, even my own teacher, you know, Al Lepak used to teach there and he gave Jeff some lessons. Mm -hmm. And he says, he's gonna be a, a good little drummer. He's, he's got it, you he, know. He was right. He knew right away, you know. And Mike, you know, Mike took uh, guitar lessons from um, a teacher at the university back there called the Julius Hart of School of Music. Mm -hmm. A gentleman used to come over, you know, our house and give him lessons at the house. Mm -hmm. So that's how it all started, you know. Okay, and um, right now, Joe is sacrificing his lunch break to do this interview, thank you. In Any time. Uh, he, he's 85 years old. And he's 85. 85, yeah, yeah. And, and he's still teaching. That's incredible. Yeah, I just got back from uh, Japan about three weeks ago. I brought my own group over there at the uh, Cotton Club. They asked me to bring a quartet over and it was incredible. We had a great experience. You know, Japanese people are so into music, any kind of music, you know. So I was kind of leery what it was going to be like at first because I never played with it. First of all, it's a beautiful club. I, you know, I had no idea mm -hmm. there was anything like that in Tokyo, you know. Mm -hmm. But because uh, the jazz clubs here are kind of, you know, they're kind of loose, you know, funky a little bit, you know. Mm -hmm. But this was like uh, really uh, like you were in a hotel, uh, you know. <laughs> Five star hotel. Yeah. <laughs> okay. What's the most important lesson you teach your students here at LACM? You have to believe in yourself. You know, if, it, if it's a dream and you're really serious about it, you know, then you have to go through to uh, go through all extremes, uh, areas of uh, you know being a professional, you know because today there's no room for amateurs, you know. Yeah, I mean you could be at an amateur level and make a living. Why not? You know, you know, musicians, drummers do that. You know, but if your aspirations, you know, we get a lot of students at Lama, and I'll say. Why are you here? You know, why did you come to Lama? Well, I want to be a studio drummer. Well, you know, <laughs> they have no d idea what it takes to be a studio drummer. But some of them do, of what, course. What does it take? It takes a, a commitment, a lifelong commitment. But in a way, you, you know, you have to be realistic. And somehow your teacher or teachers have to realize, help you realize that, yeah, you have the talent for it. Now you have to persevere and work for it, mm -hmm. you know? I mean, you know, you have guys like uh, Vinny and all these great guys. Those guys, uh, you know, they went to Berkeley. They went to college. Uh, they, uh, you know, persevered. They really were hard workers, you know? But at the same time, you get a guy like Jeff, my son Jeff, and, you know, Jeff just, about got through high school. Mm -hmm. He never went to college, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, he has no formal education. Uh, <clears throat> but, he, you know, he was an intelligent guy and he just had a natural gift for the drums. You know, he, Jeff didn't work that hard for it. Yeah, he practiced, you know, he practiced every day. But he, like, from day one, like with school orchestra, he played in the school orchestra. You know, he really gave his time. Uh, even in elementary school, then he went to middle school. You know, and he always played with the orchestras. Then high school, he played in all the shows that the uh, high school orchestra would play. He even was in a percussion woodwind ensemble that traveled all over LA. So he was committed, you know, and then every Saturday, uh, he used to go take lessons with a percussionist who had a group of percussionists. And they would do like, uh, you know, uh, works from percussion composers, you know. So he really got to know 
about music and odd meters and all that, you mm -hmm. know. But he didn't work that hard for it, but he did put in his time, okay. some time, you know. But as far as like uh, the groove and all that, that, you know, between you and I, that came from like playing with Beatle songs, you know, yeah. with, their, with their records, you know. And Jeff was a Jimi Hendrix freak. I mean, his whole room, you, when he was like, from 10 years old on, seriously, you, you would go in his room and there'd be like a, a, a real, uh, from India, a blanket. You could tell, you walk in his room, you say, this guy listens to Jimi Hendrix, mm -hmm. you know. And he did. Jeff was a really good artist. Mm -hmm. In fact, I took his drawings once. I didn't take them. I had a student whose mother was an art teacher. And when I found that out, I asked her, I said, you know, I have a son home and he's always drawing. And I'm really, you know, as his father, I'm not bragging, but, you know, not because he's my son, but I think there's something there as far as art. And I asked her, I said, would you look at them? She says, anytime. So I brought her. They were just sketches, you know, mm -hmm. watercolors uh, and pencil, you know, uh, colors, you know, uh, crayons. She looked at the drawings and she says, get him to an art teacher. This guy, this kid at 10 years old, his proportions, you know, when he drew a picture of a person, the arms, the legs, you know, the fingers, everything was, you know, right in, you know, proportion. Mm -hmm. And Jeff did uh, the cover of your book, Drum Method. Yeah. That was just real quick. <laughs> yeah, but he did. He got a little contemporary with yeah. it. <laughs> hey, Joe, um, I think you, we have to wrap it up. Yeah. We have to go soon. Oh, yeah. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, please check out Joe's uh, Facebook site and also his books. He has two books. And also check out uh, the records he's playing on. I listed everything below. Thank you very much. Thank you. See you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.